I've had some people ask me about my Arch Linux setup. So in this geeking off, I'm going to show you a tour of my Arch Linux setup. Computers, gaming, retro gear, devices, tech reviews, and more. Geeking off with Android. Okay, to get this started off, this is the main desktop. And what do we've got here? We've got two 27 inch uh, Hang Seek G or something. I don't know. Some generic brand that was cheap and on sale on Amazon. So I bought them. Eh, they're okay. Not the greatest monitors in the world. But they at least give me 1080p. Um, here is my con um, control surface for uh, making my music. Of course, we've got a microphone with a Eurotrack UB1002 uh, mixer here for the microphone because it's a phantom powered microphone. Um, got the Razer Black Widow mechanical keyboard here. So yeah, it's got a nice sound to it. Oh, light's green because I like it green. Like a creeper. Like right there. Um, got a Logitech uh, trackball mouse here. I love trackball mice course with her here to help my palm rest as I work. Um, I originally had uh, this mouse here still hooked up but the scroll wheel doesn't scroll anymore so yeah kind of sucks because that was my favorite mouse but not gonna buy a new one for that price. Alright so let's move on to the the system itself. Of course we got a ridiculous case full of ridiculous cool stickers that I pretty much got at Linux Fest to kind of decorate it up. It's green. The LED lights in here are also green. Let's see if this will show a little. Yeah, there we go. Um, of course, in the front, this is my uh, SATA 1 and SATA 2 hard drives, which are in hot swappable bay drives. So that way, when I do a uh, you know, distro hop in or just want to change OS's real quick, I just pop in a new. Uh, SSD into there and away I go. Um, and then of course here we got a multi-card reader, just a generic one. And then here we got an, uh, a Blu-ray disc burner from LG. Um, nothing in this slot, just I think there's a hard drive behind here. And then here, this case is when I ordered it, I didn't know it had this, but it has a SATA hard drive hot swap bay right there. So if I need to do some, you know, check an old hard drive or repair somebody else's. I'm all set to go. And then of course it comes with you know power reset and a uh, display for telling you the current temperature of the CPU. Uh, let's go ahead and open her up here. Okay. Hmm, needs to be cleaned. Getting a little dusty in there. For the CPU we got an AMD um, FX uh, 9590 um, runs at uh, 4.7 gigahertz and it is kind of a piece of shit um, not gonna lie I wouldn't recommend this processor it is an overheating bastard and will create a miserable day but thanks to Linux and a cool little uh, uh, github script I'm able to get this thing running without freezing up on me um, down here boy, a little dusty Let's be cleaned up a little fine dust for the video card, we got a Gigabyte GTX 760 with 4 gigabytes of video memory in it. Um, we got the drive, the bay. Down here we have two um, hard drives. One I think is 4 terabytes and the other one is 3. Um, and a 750 watt power supply. Believe it or not, this dust is over a year old because on the fan intakes I have fan filters on them which I just kind of vacuum and clean them up. I can probably wash them with water. They just come off and you clean them up. But yeah, it has really helped with the dust situation. Like I said, this dust is just not even barely from the past, you know, at least over a year now. That's done great. All right, so let's jump in and I'll show you the, the OS itself with its inwards. All right, here we are at the desktop. 
Hello, this is my desktop. As you can see, I'm a big Donkey Kong Country fan. I love my DK. So that's why my background is DK. Um, currently on my Arch system, as you can see here, I am running um, Mate. And I'll show you what version that is here real quick. Um, yep, a recent version, which is 1.10 at this current time. And I love Mate. I originally used to have GNOME 3 on here, but I just didn't like the direction GNOME 3 was going, and I didn't like how every update just removed features, broke my extensions, broke my themes. I just got really sick of dealing with that all the time. So I decided to go back to something that was a little bit familiar to me. This is my favorite when GNOME was GNOME 2. I fell in love with it, and this is the desktop environment I fell in love with. And Mate brings back that good old feeling for me, so that is why I use Mate. So, as you can see here, I got the little foot icon up here. And then I got, of course, my currently running programs and a little clock over here that tells me the date and simple stuff like that. Um, for my accessories, I don't really got much. Got an archive manager, calculator. And yeah, I know this is not the name of some of this stuff. I've renamed some of this stuff and cleaned up this menu a little bit so it looks a little bit more nicer to my eyes. Um, Docky, which I'll show you here in a bit. Uh, K3B is the uh, application I use for burning my Blu-ray discs. Um, Mate search tool, and of course a text editor, which is Pluma. Pluma, and of course take screenshot, which I do quite often. Um, under games, ooh yeah, not much in here. Um, I do have Steam installed, and some of these games are uh, Steam games, but um, Beat Hazard. City Skylines, one of my favorite um, city simulation games for Linux. I, this is the game that, oh, it keeps me gaming on this system. Of course, DOSBox for that nostalgia itch. Uh, a fake NES. Um, Fez, which is a really cool, um, kind of like, uh, it's hard to describe. You can look it up. Goat Simulator, eh, it was a waste of money. It's one of those games you play for about 10 minutes or 30 minutes or whatever. And once you go through it and play for it for an evening, you're like, eh, well, had enough of that. Uh, Jazz Punk, another one of those games. Very short, not worth the price that I paid for it, I believe. Uh, Minecraft Edit, which lets you edit uh, Minecraft Worlds. Uh, Moopin 64 Plus, uh, and then 64 Emulator. Nexus is one of my favorite uh, first-person shooter games for Linux. And every once in a while I like to play. And of course I got Play on Linux. Um, we'll get into this in a little bit. Um, Portal, Portal 2, a Super Nintendo emulator. Of course, there's Steam. Super Tux Cart, which works really, believe it or not, I'm going to have to do a playthrough on this because it works really great with my uh, N64 controller. It plays really well with that. And a Game Boy Advance emulator. Under graphics, you know, we've got Image Viewer, Inkscape, Krita, and... Well, this is new. This wasn't here before. Oh, this is cool. This is something with the new made, made update. I didn't know this was in here. Cool. That's actually a cool little tool. Um, let's see. Under Internet, of course, we got Chromium, FileZilla, and Firefox, which is my main use browser. Um, and, of course, regular Google Chrome. I have multiple browsers because it's kind of nice to be signed into multiple sessions without having to log out and stuff like that. So um, I would say Firefox is my favorite out of all of them. But my next fallback would, of course, be Google Chrome. Um, Composer, which lets me um, uh, edit a HTML in my website. Uh, of course, Skype, which is kind of crappy. The Skype support for Linux right now is really crappy because there's no group chat. So, unfortunately, the only way I can get group video chat right now on Linux is to use uh, Google+, Plus, you know, the Hangouts which is good enough, you know, at least everyone, you know, they don't have to install any programs or, you know, except for I think they have to install a plugin for their browser. But for the most part, um, almost everyone is on, that I talk to is on the Google Plus, and not everyone's on Skype, so it, it's a good workaround. Thunderbird for my email. I really don't use this much unless I have, like, a, you know, those sites that say, oh, you need to verify your email address or you need to click this link that we sent you in the email. That's the only time I really use email on the desktop. Most of the time, I just do it on my phone. Transmission for downloading. This browser was, uh, I don't know. It's an okay browser. It is, I think it's in, um, what do you call, 
technical preview. Um, but it's it's got a nice look to it and doesn't want to move. Okay, there we go. It's got a nice. It's it's a very simple browser. Only problem is I don't use this because it doesn't like Google Plus um, Hangouts. It's a pain in the ass. So I just don't use it as a daily. It's just one of those. Oh, we'll phone experiment with it, play with it. I use it. Um, and of course, I use um, WICD as my network manager um, because it also can be run from the command line. Very, very nice um, uh, network manager. Probably one of my favorites than you know the GNOME network manager. Eh. Like I said, I just gave up on GNOME. I didn't like the direction. I just wasn't liking it anymore, especially after the previous 3.16 update. I go to the file, um, I go into Nautilus, and the, the icons are oh, so huge. And even when you turn them down the small setting, they're still ridiculous huge. I'm sorry. I don't like huge icons. That was one of the biggest turnoffs for me. Um, and, of course, XChat IRC. Under Office, got the basic stuff. Got um, LibreOffice Writer, Calc. Composers in there again. And, of course, a document viewer. Very simple. That's all I need. I mostly only do a little bit of word processing and a little bit of, you know, spreadsheet work. So that's all I need. Don't need all that other junk. Other, this is just the Wine apps. Uh, one password for. Uh, that's a program. It's a password manager program. And the reason why I use that is because, well, I paid for a license. And, well, it works in Wine. Since I paid for it, it's a good way to still be able to use it. And, of course, Paint Shop Pro 8. Yeah, that's an old version. Believe it or not, that's how I make all my thumbnails and everything. It's just, it's an old program, really old program. Um, way out of date. I don't even know what the date of this thing is. 2003, my goodness, way old. Ah. <clears throat> but it works in Wine, and it does everything that you can do with newer software. It's just, well... You know, I like it. It's one of those things, yeah, I know. Um, sound and video. Of course, we got Audacity, which I, I kind of don't like 100%. I wish its multi-track functions were a little bit better. Um, but it's the best option that I got for Linux right now for audio editing. Um, GNU View. It just, just works with the webcam, little webcam tool. Handbrake, good conversion tool for, for example, converting this video when I'm done with it because it's being recorded with um, open broadcast software here. And it records it in FLV for whatever reason, I don't know. So it's got to be converted. Lightworks. This is what the program that allowed me to move to uh, Linux is because I can finally edit videos. Um, it's not the most intuitive um, editing program in the world, but it does what you need in a video editor, and it's on the level of like Premiere, um, Sony Vegas, and Magic's, you know, editing suites. It's got everything in it. It's just finding them and knowing where to find those options are not the most intuitive in the world, but once you find them, they're there. And so it gives you a full um, um, editing uh, capabilities um, that no other program under Linux. Um, I have OpenShot on here, but that thing just crashes like every 10 seconds. You click on something, crash, change an option, crash. Um, probably, I would say OpenShot Video Editor is probably the worst video editor <laughs> ever, ever programmed. It's a crashy, buggy only reason why I haven't installed in my system is because it can be used as a quick video converter. Converter, you just load one clip in if you want to convert, and it gives you a ton of options um, for when you want to render off a video file. And that's um, let's see, I just show you here. Export video. Of course, you're gonna have me have to add something real quick. Uh, I just need something. Okay, let's throw that down there just for an example. Um, because it's got so many options in here. Um, Lightworks, um, that's the only problem I have with Lightworks. It doesn't give you these fine tuning options um, for rendering videos. Um, only downside um, with it, let me just 
in, out, and insert that real quick. Just say this is a clip I was editing. Um, because in Lightworks, when you go to export something, it only has presets. Um, and only a few of them actually work really well. I usually just use the Blu-ray setting. It gives me a good bit, bit rate um, and whatnot. The YouTube setting, it gives you, it works, but it's an extremely low, 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 low bit rate. It is horrible. Um, so most of the time I do the Blu-ray. And if I really want really, really high quality with 60 frames per second, then I go with the uh, AVC uh, HD here. But yeah, that's only only bicker that I have with Lightworks is it's not letting me fine tune the you know the video settings. Like I like to be able to set my bit rate, my encoder, my video format, etc., etc., etc. But you know that's the problem with my switch to Linux. There's always this little something, always something little that's just eh. it's the best way I can describe it. Um, no, I don't want to save that. Close without saving. Goodbye. Get out of my face. Um, where was I? Back on video. Uh, Jack is what's making my audio work. Um, I've tried Pulse Audio, you know, Alsa. They're just a big pain in the neck. For some reason, Jack works with everything. It was my godsend. It took me forever to find it, but well worth it. Now, record my desktop. This will probably be get well, probably will be getting removed because you can't really how you choose where you want to t record on your desktop is probably the most intuitive thing. You can't resize this little picture here. And so if you want to select a certain area, it is just, you know, and I can't even resize it there. It's just, yeah. So it, it was, it, I used that before OBS finally came. So it's one of those ones that's on its way out. Rhythm box for some music, which I really don't use. Now SM player, I switched to this with, um, with MPV on the back end. Let me make sure that's the right name of it. Um, it's MP, yeah, something. Find an MP4. Uh, yeah, MPV. I use that because um, I used to use, uh, what was it called? Um, DLC, I think it was. And that thing just wouldn't play um, these... Uh, MT2S files, it just glitched up and it was squarey. It was horrible. And I know it wasn't Linux because it did the exact same thing on Windows. When I went over to Windows, I'm like, was a problem? And then I had like something, I think it was called Media Player Classic on Windows, and that thing played anything I wanted to throw at it. So I decided to do a little research and try to find like an alternative to what I used before. And that's what worked. Um, of course, sound. System tools bulk renamer. I've never actually used that, but if it's there, I got it. Kaja, the file manager, which you see here. And I got like three different disk utilities. This is one thing I think I believe I liked from um, from GNOME was the disk utility manager because you can actually um, burn and use, um, what do you call um, image files and burn them to like a, you know, a thumb drive for like making Linux, Linux distros, uh, drives and whatnot. Of course, Gparted. Grub Customizer, which I have customized my own little Grub screen. Um, I didn't realize I was gonna do that. Um, HTOP, I don't know why this is even here. This is one of those things that actually appeared after I installed Nate and removed uh, GNOME 3. It's just kind of a graphical, It's I, I wish you can change the colors, it just, I don't know. Oh, because you can click on stuff too. So yeah, um, yeah, I just don't like the colors. Um, log viewer, uh, mate system monitor, and of course VirtualBox, which in my VirtualBox do a lot of Linux stuff. Been testing out Windows 10. Um, this is my playground for testing out stuff and get a little nostalgic, you know, playing with Windows 95. This Arch 64 was my original test um operating system that I used for when I made, um, when I first wanted to install Arch on my machine, I installed it into this virtual box. Um, so these, some of these virtual you know, machines came over with me from Windows. And that was one of them, because that, believe it or not, this will be my test or two. If I want to test something to see how an update's gonna react or whatever, I will do it in VirtualBox. 
All right, and of course, here's the basic thing, the places, the system, your preferences, and of course, the NVIDIA, you, I am using the proprietary drivers for this because, believe it or not, Lightworks requires proprietary drivers now, so kind of one of those things I don't really like it too much, but being able to edit video in Lightworks is what's keeping me on Linux right now. If it wasn't for Lightworks, I would still be on Windows. All right, let's move on to the other monitor now. Now we're on the other monitor here. Uh, of course, I, this is usually where I keep my web browser. I keep a terminal open here all, at all times so I can, um, you know, run my commands. And remember what I was saying earlier how this processor, this FX chip, um, whenever it over, it, it, it overheats very easy. So I've got this um, temp, th it's called temp, uh, temp throttler. As you can see, it's throttling the temperature. So whenever the CPU gets about, I have to set it for about 40 degrees Celsius because after it goes over 40 degrees Celsius, it, it starts locking up and it's a it's a disaster, especially when you're trying to render video or play video games. So I have to run this script in order to keep the computer stable. And this is something I can't do under Windows. Believe it or not, I can't even run Windows on this computer because it just crashes over and over and over and over because of the overheating issue. And I've tried changing water cooling, um, coolant coolers, and I've tried different heat sinks. Nothing seems to solve the issue. It just like as soon as it gets over 40 degrees, it's, it's out. It's out the window. And what it does, like I said, whenever it reaches um, 40 degrees Celsius, as you can see here, it um, changes the frequency. Like right now, it's running at uh, 4.7 4 gigahertz, and it'll change as the temperature goes up. I've seen it go as low as like 3.5 gigahertz sometimes when I'm really pushing the machine. So this was a lifesaver. It was getting to the point where it was like, I'm going to have to go out and buy a new processor because this AMT is a piece of junk. Don't buy it. Um, and I've read through threads, and it's just it's a common problem with this particular CPU. Um, over here is my Cronky, and you're probably like, "Wow, why is it why is it windowed like that?" Because I want to be able to move it around. Um, and it tells you basic information, like you know how long it's been up, RAM usage, um, which is kind of funny since I've been running a. Arch Linux. I've never seen this go above uh, eight gigabytes. So it's kind of like, why did I buy 32 gigabytes of RAM? I've never, never gone beyond it. But I think I did when I do run Windows here and there on the other SSD. I can actually get into about 24 gigabytes of RAM. So it, go figure. Linux much much easier on that RAM usage. Um, of course, CPU tell me how much is going on here. Uh, my file systems, the two hard drives that I have, the four terabyte, which holds all my main data, and then I have this one, I call it raw meat, and that's my three terabyte drive, and that's where I dump all my raw footage to, it's stuff that I'm not going to keep permanently after I edit the video, you know, clear it off, and free up some space, but yeah, I like it this way, instead of having it engraved into the desktop, this way I can just place it where I want to, and leave it alone. Now, on this one, I have the original applications, places, and um, system up here. Um, kind of, on the other desktop, I just have it under one menu. Because this is my secondary monitor. Like I said, this is usually where my web browsing is going on. Believe it or not, I probably look at this monitor more than I do my main monitor. Because my main monitor, I play the you know video games and edit my videos on that monitor. And, of course, my uh, cool little toolbar with tools, you know got my uh, network manager now there is reason why there's two uh, network connections up here is because well I, I have two network cards for some reason um, Linux does not like the onboard NIC on my motherboard um, for whatever reason I don't know it just doesn't like it so uh, I had to go and buy a you know another NIC to install in it uh, in order to get networking. You know, Linux, the Linux kernel is kind of funky like that sometimes. I think there's another like weird thing where like my Sound Blaster um, card, which I would prefer to use, doesn't work under Linux. But I have to use the onboard one. It's, it's weird. It's the only part with Linux. Sometimes you do run into hardware that just doesn't work. But for the most part, you know, I just had to buy another network card and 
I'm back in business. I'm just a little disappointed I can't use my sound blaster. Um, over here's my docky. I have it way over here on this side, believe it or not. It's like, that's why you keep seeing me look over here is because I'm looking at the other monitor, which is, if you saw the video portion at the beginning, uh, that's why. Um, and here's a few programs in here that are not on the other one. This is my Reason 5, another program that I paid for, paid for a license, and I really like to use it, and it's what I use to make my music with. Luckily for me, because I play on Linux, they already have it pre-configured and ready to go for you. So, oh, it was like another one of those small things that if it wasn't for that, I'd still be on Windows because this is the program I use. I've, like I said, I've tried other open source solutions, kind of like what I did with the video editors. Um, but nothing works like a good program that's the developers made the work, I guess is the best way to put it. But yeah, I have still have not found an open source solution. Uh, I've tried many of them like Adore and a couple of others. I can't remember, but they just, they don't work. Um, for me anyways, it might for some people, and maybe it's my willingness not to want to sit there and spend three days trying to learn a new program that something that's used for years. Um, and of course, Minecraft. Uh, it, it, the best thing about it, this thing can play some mean Minecraft. Um, and yeah, without Minecraft, what would I do? And every time I want to log in, it always thinks I'm Mark Hyder for some reason. I don't know why. It always thinks I'm Mark Hyder. I think I was trying to help with this account. <laughs> Mark Hyder, you're stuck every time I log in. And I have to go and put my credentials in there. And even if I click remember, it's driving nuts. Probably one of those things I have to go into my home folder and delete all the configs and maybe that'll clear it up. Um, Don't know what else I can show you here besides, you know, a little trash can and a... Uh, uh, weather here so there we are this is my arch linux box um not too many apps i need everything i need is here got a video editor got a music maker got a web browser and i think one of the biggest things that saved the day time for trippy video mode was this one um believe it or not this is more of a test i'm making this video to kind of test out obs um to see how it functions because this is what really saved the day because one little thing I kept having to do I had to keep uh, jumping over to Windows when I wanted to do um, you know like Minecraft videos because OBS was probably the best program ever I tried using and record my desktop to do it but like I said it's very finicky and I didn't like it and it kept doing like weird artifacts on the screen and blinking it around and <clears throat> but um, OBS gives me more options. I can have multiple audio channels for different programs, different, um, uh, what do you say, uh, options down here. There, we'll just say that. But you can have multiple um, media sources, whatnot, uh, video capture. And you can add more, a ton more, and keep building a stack on it, which I think is really, really cool. I'm going to plan to... Um, use OBS here for um, live streaming a special little event next week of a gameplay that's going to be very disturbing. It might be the worst game to come to Linux or it might be the best but we'll find out about that next week. So folks, I'm going to end it here. Um, I hope you had fun of me touring my uh, Arch Linux box here. Um, but uh, yeah, like I said, this was more of a test. So I hope you enjoyed. Um, we'll have some more videos coming up here in the future. I've got a minnow board cooking up. I'm going to try to restore an old laptop that I had like 10, 15 years ago. I don't know how old it is, but it's one of my first uh, like major laptops that I got back in the day. And I want to restore it. Hard drive's dead. So look forward to that. And of course, Japan blogs. And who knows? Might be other surprises coming up as we go through the summer. So, this is Anthony from Anthware, folks. From this time and every time on, keep on clicking. This is Anthony from Anthware, signing off.
Oh, oh, oh.